I have pulled the pin and I bought myself a GoPro Hero 10. This is the very first GoPro upgrade I've made since the Hero 7. And in fact, I own two Hero 7s and I still highly rate them. There's a few reasons why I didn't buy the 8 or the 9. The hyper smooth issue when using an ND filter on the Hero 8, as we know, I like to use ND filters, so that was a no brainer for me. And also the fact that you can't change your lenses. If your rock hits that and cracks it, you're up for an entire new GoPro. That was a deal breaker for me. There's no way in the world I was going to be buying a Hero 8. And the Hero 9 came out and I heard some issues with the audio, with the microphones. Plugging it in, it's all crackling and popping. Sometimes, popping. Sometimes it doesn't even register that the microphone's plugged into the GoPro and so that you just be riding around, come home, upload your footage and it just has no audio, which would suck. I've only had this for a day though and so yesterday I took it for a rip around the block from late afternoon till the night time and I wanted to test it out and see if the upgrade is worthwhile. In this video, we're gonna have a look at the auto settings, my personal manual settings that I usually use, night settings for low light, plus we'll have a look at the quality of stills pulled from the footage, and finally, how it performs off the bike, handheld vlogging styles. All right, let's go, let's hit the road, baby. The first thing I noticed when putting this on is that I can access the record buttons so easily. So before I used to have the mic adapter on top, on top of the GoPro and um, because I've got the auto power on and record function enabled I used to have to slide the, the mic adapter across to be able to hit the record button and with gloves and everything your finger gets a little bit stuck with this though now it's all good I can hit it I can hear it beep straight away it's very loud very loud beeps and you've got options there to turn it up or down which is awesome the size of the Hero 10 is definitely bigger than the 7 but is pretty much identical to the Hero 9 I'm a massive fan of the larger screen, being able to navigate through the menus makes it a lot easier. The weight of the Hero 10 with the media mod feels pretty similar to the 7 with the mic adapter on, just far more streamlined and tidy. The footage you're seeing here is completely ungraded and is what you see straight out of the box. Then the most noticeable change here is the boost in vibrance. The Hero 10 comes with three GoPro color settings which are flat, neutral and vibrant, where the Hero 7 only has flat and GoPro. The image stability has definitely improved as has the overall image quality. Man, these birds, what the hell? This is the Media Mod mic. The benefit of all this is that I don't need to carry another camera. I don't need to carry a microphone. I'm holding it with my hand, which is incredible. And there's that screen right next to the lens here so I can actually see what I'm filming and what I'm doing. And then if I want to flip it around, then I can see the back screen. Literally just took off my helmet and turned it around and started shooting. The bag that I'm using is this and I can carry everything in this. So the benefit of all that is that I am taking less gear, which means less weight, less issues really, like setting up the mic and everything, putting the Gorilla Pod on, put it all together and then pack it all down when you want to pack up, go to the next location, reset it all up. It gets pretty hectic on the old time situation and the patience situation, but this is cool. I'm really hoping this turns out really nicely because uh, I want this to be my go-to vlogging camera. Literally just take it straight off the helmet and do what I'm doing right now. Incredible. All right, so we're going to do a quick audio test here. We're going to fire up the bike and then see how it sounds. Just give it some gas. These are heaps loud. The pipes are heaps loud. You guys know that. There's no volume level adjustment on the Media Mod mic either. So it's probably going to clip like crazy and just be all disordered and crap. But let's see how it goes. All right, let's give it some gas. Okay, let's go for a jog, shall we? So this is with Hyper Smooth Boost on. Hyper Smooth 4.0. So I'm going for a full on little jog in my moto boots, which are not made for running. Um, and yeah, how's the, how's the shake? How's the shake ending up? All right, so I got Horizon Lock on. Um, so what this does is lock the horizon until you hit four, uh, 27 to 45 degrees. So I'm tilting it, tilting it, tilting it. And now it's just let go. Let's go for a run with this. Whew. You get more fit. All right, so I'm shaking this pretty crazily. Ah, jumping around like a madman. Whoa, parkouring, running, running, running. And uh, okay, we're back. How was that? Was that dead smooth? Oh man, okay, so now Horizon Lock only works in linear mode. So you miss out on all the super view angle that I usually like to use because I like to keep my hands in shot when I'm riding. But I feel like with Horizon Lock on, if I'm riding, I want to see the I want to see the tilt, you know? I want you guys with me hooking around a corner. I don't want Horizon Lock on and it might look weird. Let's test it out anyway, see how it goes. Oh, that was my damn Insta360. 
they sent that out to me to review. I haven't done it yet. Oh, that is lucky. It's safe. It just landed on its side right there. Lucky it didn't hit the lens, man. Woo! When grading this footage, I found that the Hero 10 had a better dynamic range to work with, meaning that I could do a lot more when it comes to adjusting exposures and altering colours. Not by much though, the Hero 7 still looks great for a 3 year old camera. I noticed that one of the downfalls is that the battery doesn't perform any better than the Hero 7, and I've read that it actually performs worse than the Hero 9. At this point, I've gotten about an hour's use out of the first battery. There is a lot going on now with the new GP2 processor, plus I'd imagine that the media mod would drain some battery too. So I'd highly recommend buying another battery. They're relatively cheap, you just don't want to be stuck out mid-ride to find your battery has died. There has been a noticeable improvement with low light shooting now. Still not incredible, but with this comparison you can see that the Hero 10 has far less grain or noise in the footage. It is sharper and has better dynamic range than the Hero 7. Also this is the audio coming directly from the Hero 10. Awesome added feature is that the Hero 10 now has a hydrophobic lens, meaning that it repels water and it does this really, really well. Gone are them days where a tiny little drop of water gets on your lens and ruins your entire shot or your entire ride. And just a heads up, if you were licking your lens before you'd go out riding to repel water, if you do that now with a hydrophobic lens, you're going to actually get rid of that hydrophobic coating. GoPro claims that the images pulled from individual frames from video are a whopping 19.6 megapixels when shooting at 5.3K, compared to 12 to 14 megapixels in the previous models. Due to only being able to shoot in linear mode at 5.3K, we're going to pull frames from the 4K footage where I could use SuperView. Once I've found a suitable frame, I then import it into Lightroom where I apply one of my presets on it. POV is essentially made for point of view shots from the GoPro, so here it just works perfectly. Now we're going to compare this image to another one that I took on my Hero 7. You can see that there is a definite improvement in the quality of the image. You can see that this image, there's a lot of grain in the road textures and everything, but in the new Hero 10 version, there's not so much. It actually looks pretty damn good. So it is a definite improvement there. One of the best features I've found so far, personally, the fact that you can put in presets for all your different modes that you're going to be shooting in. With this, I have my POV set up, I've got my vlogging set up, I've got my night riding set up, I've got my cinematic set up, and you just hit it, preset, boom, away you go. I think that was a thing on the Hero 9, could have even been a thing on the Hero 8. And the new GP2 processor just makes everything run so fast. It's so quick and it's smooth and it just feels so damn nice. I'm really stoked with it, hey. GoPro Hero 10, they have come a long way, especially from the 7. For me, this is a definite feasible upgrade from the Hero 7 or even the Hero 8. If you're coming from the Hero 9, obviously the upgrades aren't going to be as great. But in saying that, you won't have to buy new gear. You can keep your ND filters, you can keep your media mod, you can keep your batteries. It's hard for me to compare the Hero 8 or the Hero 9 not owning one, so I'd love to hear your thoughts so far based on the footage that I've just shown you. And if you have any questions, guys, please make sure you drop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And also check out this video right here if you want to make your footage look like you're riding in a scene of John Wick. See you guys.